Hello and welcome back to AR77. Today I'm going to do another one of my kind of guides really just for perhaps for you know newer shooters who are perhaps new to the hobby they, they've got the first air pistol and they just want to know more about it or maybe you're considering getting an air pistol but feel like you'd like to know more about it before you kind of jump in there. Uh, on this video I'm specifically talking about the 4.5mm BB uh, air pistols, uh, the action pistols sometimes they get called. Um, and I'm going to talk you through the different methods or the different kind of means really of loading your ammunition, your 4.5mm BBs, because there are a variety of different ways and if you, you know, obviously if you pick up a gun you're going to read the instructions, that would be the first point of, of contact. Um, most, if not all, of these air pistols come with pretty comprehensive instruction booklets, so it's always worth reading through those before you start trying to use the pistol uh, for safety as much as anything else. But if you were kind of trying to weigh up the pros and cons before you bought one and you weren't sure which was the simplest to load um, or which was the most fiddly, I thought it would be worth just kind of going through the different methods there are, the different types of magazines there are, and loading systems, just so that you're informed, really. Um, some of us just like, you know, more information, more answers than there are questions. So uh, I thought I'd put this video together as a bit of a brief guide for you. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit like, um, let me know how you feel about stuff, any problems that you've encountered, uh, any any hacks that you've discovered in terms of loading these things. Um, yeah, let's make a start. So, the most simple, you could argue, um, the most simple method would be what we call an internal magazine on a pistol. So, just to demonstrate that, I have my trusty Colt Defender here, very straightforward air pistol, relatively low price, and kind of just does what it says on the tin. There's very little to concern yourself with mechanism wise here, and loading it really couldn't be simpler. Um, so, what you do is you slide the, uh, the grip back like that, and to load your BBs, all you do is slide this back here, this little kind of follower. Tricky to do it with gloves on, but you slide, <laughs> slide that back all the way down and into place. You can see it's held there. And then all you can do, all you need to do really, is see if I've got some BBs in my magic drawer. So you get the uh, get the pot of BBs. These are Umarex ones, uh, but other ones are available. Uh, and they come with a nice little pouring spout, and you just tip those in there until it fills up. I think that particular pistol takes 16 rounds. It fills up there, let that release and the follower will sort of just hold them in place. Close your grip. Um, this is on safety. That's off safe. But yeah, once you've done that, you're ready to go. And that's very straight, straightforward, very simple way of loading your BBs. Uh, I am going to do another brief kind of video uh, about loading CO2 and different methods because I didn't want to try and cram it all into one video. My videos tend to be longer, kind of long form anyway, um, so I thought I'd, I'd kind of break it down into different videos. So that's the most straightforward as far as I'm concerned, the sort of internal magazine system. And you'll see different variations on that. Sometimes the internal magazine is in the slide itself. I think there's a Crossman pistol where it has a sort of internal magazine in the slide. Um, but for the most part, they're all the same. You just pull back that spring, load in your BBs, release the spring, and you're good to go. Very straightforward. And the, the, the same is true, really, for all of these different magazine types or systems. But there are variations on a theme. So when it comes to simplicity... The next kind of magazine I would probably look to talk about is this. This is a stick magazine. So the way you load it is exactly the same really. You pull your follower all the way back 
that locks in place. They don't always lock in place, but for the most part they do, and that's that's useful. Otherwise, you have to just kind of hang on to it for dear life and hope that it doesn't uh, break your fingernail, those precious fingernails that I don't have any of. Um, but yeah, you pull that back into place, it locks back, and then you can just load your BBs in. Um, very straightforward. They, in this one, they just go through that, that hole there. They'll roll down to the top. And then you, when you're full, I'm not sure exactly how many this holds. I can't remember off the top of my head. 16, 16 to 19 usually. Um, and then release the spring and that will hold them in place. And you're ready to go. So you're exactly the same as the internal magazine. It's just this is a separate magazine. This drops out and you can load it without having to hold onto your pistol, which is quite nice. Also for the... The, the gun fans out there, the pistol fans, and especially the replica fans, it's nice to have a dropout magazine because that's probably you know, more similar to how the actual pistol itself, the real world firearm, uh, would operate. The difficulty with these, or the, the, the kind of the bugbear with these is, it's not a full size magazine. So for the replica fans, yeah, you've got that sense of dropping the mag and re reloading and sticking the mag back in. But it's not a full-size magazine, so it's not ideal for a, a replica collector. Having said that, these are probably cheaper to replace than some of the larger magazines. Um, if you wanted to get two or three of these, probably wouldn't break the bank. Um, and there's very little to go wrong with them as well. If you drop them, it's probably not going to be the end of the world. And although they're not great from a replica point of view, they are perfectly good from just a, an air pistol point of view. So if, if all you care about is how the pistol looks when it's loaded up and everything, great, these are perfect for that. Um, and a lot of them will come with little details at the bottom here or somewhere else on it that, that kind of, like a little plate or whatever, that will, that will just um, help it to feel like part of the gun when it's in place. Some of them just stip, stick in, you know, you stick in the bottom of the gun and that's it. Some of them, they do a bit more to kind of integrate them with the pistol. Like in this case, this is from the Walther CP99 Compact. And that just slides in the bottom there. And as you can see, it kind of forms part of the, the lower bit of the grip there. Nice pistol, that. Yeah, but that's a stick magazine. Similar to that is this magazine. Operates exactly the same way. This is just a plastic one. It's just plastic, very straightforward. Again, probably even cheaper to replace, I'm not sure. Um, but it looks very different to the other one, but it still does exactly the same thing. You're still going to get that spring, pop it back, lock it in there. And then for this one, I think there's a hole just here where you can load in your BBs. Um, once they're loaded in, release the spring. Ouch. Um, and again, it's got a little bit on the bottom just to make it look like it's more, more like part of the pistol itself. Um, exactly the same, but different. Yeah, so you might... All these magazines will look different based on the different types of pistol they're from, but they effectively work the same way. This happens to be from the, uh, the Sig Sauer 1911 Spartan. Another lovely pistol. Again, big chunky pistol. It's a shame that it's a little lightweight plastic magazine. I prefer a big full-size dropout one. Having said that, it's adequate. It does exactly what it needs to do. And it's, it works, you know, there's nothing to go wrong with it really. I've never had a problem with it. Very good, no jams or anything like that. Okay, moving on from there then, let's look at a couple of different types of full-size magazines. First one I'm going to talk about is this. Just because it stands out, obviously, is quite, quite different from the others. You'll see a few of these magazines. Um, I thought as an industry, they'd kind of moved away from these a little bit. But actually, some of the newer firearms that have come out, some of the firearms, sorry, some of the newer air pistols that have come out um, still use this system. So I guess it's tried and tested, tried and true. This is from the Smith & Wesson uh, MMP. And this is, it's obviously a full-size magazine. Uh, you can see, again, it operates in exactly the same way. You just pull your spring down, it will lock off there at the bottom. But for this one, there's no separate hole. You just load them in from the top there. And let me just try and 
reduce the light a little bit here. Yeah, so you just load them in from the top there and then they'll slide right down. Um, so that's what I would call a, a kind of a top loader, if you will. Um, then you release your spring, just like you did on the other mags. Exactly the same system, really, for loading your, your BBs. And don't worry about all this stuff at the top. You don't have to worry about that. That's just a bit of the mechanism that helps release the CO2. And for this particular pistol and others like it, they've decided to kind of combine that, you know, uh, build that in, integrate it, if you will, to the magazine. Um, very straightforward, very straightforward for loading your CO2 there. Uh, your BBs there, and you don't have to worry about that. That's just part of the mechanism. That In some guns, that's kind of an internal thing. But for this one, they just have to build it into the magazine. Cut out there, so you can see where your CO2 goes. But we're not really concerned with that in this video. This is how you load your BBs. Spring down, BBs go in, spring up, you're ready to go. And that loads in from the top. Yeah, so very straightforward. Again, that's from the Smith & Wesson. MNP. Um, again, really nice pistol. Really nice. Moving on from there, then. Uh, this type of magazine is the bane of my life. <laughs> um, I really don't like this magazine, if I'm honest. But it's from a pistol that I really love. So, this particular magazine comes from the PT-92 by KWC. You've probably seen it as the GSG-92, the uh, Swiss Arms PT-92. Um, I'm sure there are other versions available. This is just a kind of unlicensed KWC version. And it's a really nice pistol, really nice replica of the Taurus PT-92. It's full metal, it's blowback. Um, yeah, it's, it's very accurate to the to the actual real world firearm itself. So I love the pistol, but this magazine, this magazine is a bit of a bugbear of mine. So it's a full size magazine again. Again, the way you load it, you know, the spring comes down. That's great. It's a very strong spring, which there's nothing really wrong with that. You know, it's, it's it's going to stand the test of time, you would hope. But there's nowhere to lock the spring off at the bottom. So you, you have to, you know, if you, there's nowhere to lock it off. And what you have to do really is load your BBs in through the top. And it's such a tight hole there that you have to, you know, you couldn't really, I, I don't think I'd use a speed loader with this necessarily. I don't think I'd use, I'd try and pour them in there. They wouldn't go in, they'd just pour all over the, the carpet really or the grass in your garden. So you have to kind of one by one push them in and that'll send the sort of spring down as they go in. So one by one, you're pushing them in to that top bit there. And it's a bit of an effort, you have to kind of squeeze one over the top of the other one. Uh, oh, as he knocked his camera. One over the top of the other one and keep doing that all the way through until it's loaded up with, again, I can't remember off the top of my head, I think. I think 18 rounds will fit in that one. And then the last one, if you're not careful, can just pop out. So you have to really push that last one in so that it sits kind of centrally uh, above the follower there. You can see that if I push the spring down, you can see how that follower drops down. But you want that last BB kind of centrally placed over that follower there. Um, which is, you know, it's not the end of the world. You know, first world problems and all that. It's not the end of the world. But it could be so much simpler. I've heard some people talk about uh, drilling a hole somewhere down here, just large enough to get a 4.5 millimeter BB through, millimeter BB, not filibeta. Um, and then, you know, you can have your follower down, drop them in that hole, then it would be much more straightforward. Uh, but as it stands, I don't like messing around too much with my pistols, so I haven't done that. So it's not the end of the world, like I say. What it does mean is it's taken you longer after, you know, it's very quick to shoot off 18 rounds. Uh, if you're having fun, if you're out there, it's a nice sunny day, you can easily go through 18 rounds uh, in a matter of seconds. <laughs> and then it's going to take you quite a while.
to reload that or longer than perhaps it needs to take is all I would say. So that's the downside. Still a great magazine, robust, full metal, nice weight to it. It adds a bit of weight to the to the pistol itself. Um, but it's a bit of a bugbear of mine, that, that sort of magazine. Uh, and a bit unnecessary, really. So moving on from there, we have this kind of magazine, which is kind of closer to a solution. This is from the HK USP. And again, full-size, enclosed, metal magazine, really nice, uh, really straightforward. And again, you have your spring, but this time it goes beyond this narrow point that holds the BBs in, and it, it gives you a little wider bit there that you can drop your BBs into, yeah? So once the spring comes down beyond that point, you can see that that channel widens, it broadens out a bit, and the spring will come just low enough to let you feed your BBs in there, yeah, which works a lot better because then they can just you pour them in and they're all straightforward and then you release the spring and it works like that. So just a, a minor improvement but a significant one over the previous magazine we just looked at. Again, that's from the HK USP. Another absolutely fantastic uh, pistol replica. Then you have what is perhaps a far more sensible option. This is from the uh, CZ75 uh, SP01 uh, Shadow. And this is, again, just the same. You've got your spring, your spring goes all the way down. But this time you have, you can see that there's a circular hole. So once your spring is past that point, Okay, there you go. Your BBs will drop into that hole nicely. Roll down to the top, move forward. It's it's the best system really, I think, is to have that hole. There are better ones, and I've obviously just forgotten to bring one out, which they combine the two actions. They the spring locks back and there's a hole. <laughs> so you can pull the spring all the way back, it'll lock off somewhere around there. And then that just sits there while you feed them in through the hole there. And I think that's the best way, personally, to load these magazines. Um, but as you can see, regardless of whether it's an internal magazine or an external dropout stick magazine or a dropout full-size magazine, they all operate largely in the same way. Uh, stick into the bottom of the pistol there. It's always a case of pulling the spring back feeding those BBs in, and then releasing the spring, really, and you're good to go. The only difference, really, is the ease in which you're able to do that. There is a, a different method, obviously, as you can see, uh, which is if you have a revolver-style pistol, like the Dan Wesson 6-inch BB shooter, which takes these shells. Now, for these... You just take the you take the shell, take yourself a BB, and pop it just into the end there. It just sits right in at the end of that that shell there. Um, some load from the rear, but it's the same kind of deal. Uh, yeah, are you gonna focus? Focus for me. Yeah, some loading from that end, some loading from that end. I think more often it's the pellets that load in from the rear. I'm not sure if there's any BB ones that load from the rear. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, these ones load in. They just sit in the tip of there, that BB. Until you've got your six shells all loaded. These are not loaded. Um, but then you get that and it just slots in there. Lock the pistol up. And you're good to go. So there you have it, stick magazines, internal magazines, full-size dropout magazines, some that lock back, some that have holes, some that load from the bottom, some that load from the top, uh, and then the shell loading uh, method for the revolvers. 
I hope that was useful, I hope it was informative. Uh, please, as I said at the start of the video, feel free to give us a like, share, subscribe. Take care, all the best. Bye.